Hi, my name is Greg Knox and I'm the Executive Director of Skeena Wild Conservation Trust and we've been working on a responsible development initiative in the region to try to define what we think good development looks like. And uh, most recently we've been looking at mining, the mining industry and mining projects here in northwestern BC. And we put together a responsible mining report which we're releasing and contains a lot of information about best practices and responsible approaches to mining. There's a lot of details in this report that uh, look at how mining companies can engage with communities, how communities can uh, come back and demand wh what best practices are. A key focus of our report is around water and salmon and minimizing impacts to local communities. Uh, mining impacts salmon in a lot of different ways. They have very sensitive gills for breathing and also uh, use their sense of smell a lot. And when you put metals and acid and other chemicals into water, it impacts those vital organs and can ca cause all kinds of problems. So uh, it can really screw up their ability to feed to avoid predators, to find their way home, to spawn, and in a lot of other different, different ways. So it's really important that if we're trying to protect water and salmon in aquatic environments that we minimize the amount of metals, acid, uh, and chemicals that are being put into local waterways from mining developments. There's a number of different ways that mining companies can ensure a responsible approach. Uh, they can include communities in upfront design of the project. They can obtain free prior informed consent from local indigenous communities. They can ensure transparency by doing public reporting, uh, ensuring independent monitoring and independent scientific review of their projects and independent uh, assessments of best practices. Uh, they can also hire local, buy local goods in building their projects and leave uh, positive legacies by minimizing environmental harm. There's a number of ways to minimize the environmental impacts from the projects. The, the biggest ones are avoiding interactions with uh, surface water and groundwater. They can also concentrate on those really high value ore bodies and leave the, the low quality ore bodies alone. That really reduces the amount of waste that they produce and water treatment that they have to do. The biggest thing by far mining companies can do is go underground, do underground mining instead of open pit mining. By going underground, you're really minimizing the impacts on water, on the environment. And if you, especially if you're backfilling the waste rock back into the mine shaft uh, as the mine's being developed and after the mine closes. So those, those are really big things that mining companies can do and there's companies here in northwestern BC that are doing that. Uh, a couple of examples include the Kames Underground Project uh, which is north of Smithers and yeah. the Bruce Jack Mine which is in the upper Nass watershed. Both those projects uh, decided to go underground, concentrate on high grade ore and are really have a dramatically reduced impact compared to what they would have had if they would have been open pit mines and created large tailings facilities. So our report contains a lot of information on best practices uh, which we hope will be useful in assessing mine developments as they come along. We also include a checklist of the different best practices and what a mine can and probably should be using uh, which we hope will be useful to you in looking at these different mining proposals in the region. And right now it's a really important time to have a resource like this because there's a lot of mining projects proposed and uh, the potential for impacts are huge and we saw that in the Mount Pauly disaster and we don't want a repeat of those sorts of things. We also have a lot of other mines that have left long legacies of polluted water and, and there's ways to avoid that from the outset and most important is getting involved up front and being informed about these projects. So with that we hope, uh, we hope this report is valuable to you and we will be using it to assess mining projects going forward in the region and uh, we feel that this is a, this is a useful resource to uh, engage with, with companies and the government through environmental assessment process etc. 
So if you want to know more about our Responsible Development Initiative or what we feel is responsible mining in our report, please contact Skeena Wild at skeenawild.org and we'd be happy to answer any questions.